So you hear the, mel the uh, chord progression going on. The melody notes are used, but not exactly in order. Um, there are spots now where the vamp starts, where the melody becomes very prominent. And so what I'd like to do is point out a few spots. So saxophones, would you play measure 19 for me? Sorry, measure 20, make that. And I want you to do it very slowly. And I want you to just play the and of one, two, and of two, and the downbeat of three. And just play those four notes for me. And I'll give it to you one at a time. Here we go. First note. And that is the melody of the tune, but it's buried in the middle of a melodic line. So what I did is I added some notes to it to give it a little bit of length. So saxophones, let's play that pick up there right now in tempo and just play your full eighth note pattern for measure 20 and 21. A one, two, three, four. And there you have the melodic line. We get an answer to that in the trumpet section. So trumpets. What I'd like you to do is start at measure 21 on the hand of four. Play the hand of one in the next bar. Skip the hand of two. Play the first of the 16th notes, the E that you have skip the remaining notes, and then jump down to the B. And I'll give you each one of those notes one at a time. So it'll be E, F, E, up an octave, and then B. Here we go. First note. There's the melody again. Now the trumpets will play that fragment there in context. So that's all of measure 21, 22, and 23, just that much. I'll give you four beats. A one, two, three, four. And so you hear with the addition of a couple extra notes, the melody comes in and that answers the saxophone figure. The ninth of the chord turns out to be a prominent note um, in the melody. It's usually sustained longer than any other melodic tone. And so in order to mirror that, I did the same thing. So the saxophones in bar 24 are holding the ninth of the chord. I won't have them play that right now, but you'll hear that when we put this together. Uh, trumpets again. Play measure 25. And let's go ahead and do that in rhythm. Just measure 25 and 26. Don't worry about the title. No, just start right on. A one, two, three, four. In measure 24 preceding that is actually the melody backwards with the addition of a couple of notes. Uh, trumpets, if you could do this, measure 24, play the E on the end of four, then go backwards to the F, skip two notes, go up to the E, and then drop to the B. Play those notes for me. So this is backwards minus a couple of notes in measure 24. There's no. Together, you get the backwards and then the frontwards of the melody with the addition of a couple of notes. Here we go, trumpets. Measure 24 and measure 25 and measure 26. Two, a one, two, three, four. So you hear how that melody generates more material that way. In addition, the melody can also be useful in background material. Uh, saxophones, I'm going to ask you to get your uh, woodwinds up again. During the middle of the tenor sax solo, there is a section behind the bridge. And so what I've done is done permutations of the melody of the bridge while the saxophone solo is going on. And so these are complemental figures. In fact, let's go ahead and, well, I'll add the trombones in a minute. Let's have the, the uh, woodwinds play at measure 10. Just play your first two notes. First note, 110. Because the melody is da 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 da. So I left the triplet out and I went for the first note of the melody and then the high note of the melody. Then I just did a reversal of the intervals in the next 
measure, measure 111. So a woman has played 110 and 111 together. One, two, three, okay. Same thing in measure 114, but because the interval ascended the first time, the second time, I made the interval descend. It should be really a concert F sharp going up to a C sharp. I have the F sharp go down to the C sharp, adding variety but still using the melody notes. So here we are in Woodwinds, measure 114 and 150. Two, a one, two, three, and. Characteristics provide me with lots of material to use. Even with the woodwind sections at the end, let's jump to the very end of the chart and let's play the last two measures. And this is actually, um, in fact, let's play the first four notes that you have. Let's, I'll just give you each note. Ready? So there's the melody again, and then I've added a couple of extra notes. And let's play it in tempo. Three, four, one. So once again, I've used the, the main theme of the melody in an eighth note pattern to just put a cap on the end of the arrangement. Another aspect of what I've done is to use the woodwinds at the very beginning of the arrangement, to use them in the very middle of the arrangement, behind the soloist, and then to close the arrangement with it. So there's a sense of cohesiveness. The woodwinds aren't used once and then dispensed with, but they are there and they reappear and they give us a, 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 a similar instrumentation on each end of the arrangement, giving it uh, a nice beginning and a nice end. 